Row is once again brewing with the author of this bombshell book, Endgame, appearing on British TV to defend his work. Now, and Europe correspondent Carrie Anne Greenbank is following this story and joins us live now. Carrie, good morning. Omid Scobie has denied naming the alleged royal racists. Morning, Carl and Sarah. Well, Omid Scobie has repeatedly denied that he wrote those names of these so-called royal racists in his book, Endgame, and he repeated those denials today on morning television here in the UK, which has led to a lot of questions being asked around how those names got into the Dutch copy of his book before it was published. Now, that book has since been stripped from the shelves. It will be re-released with a rectified version tomorrow. Some are saying it's all a stunt to sell more books. Uh, Piers Morgan has gone ahead and named the alleged royal racists on his talk TV show. But Omen Scobie from the start has been adamant he wasn't going to reveal the names for legal reasons. After Harry and Meghan uh, told Oprah Winfrey in 2021 that a member of the royal family who they said they weren't going to name questioned the skin colour of their then unborn child. Uh, here is Omid Scobie during his morning interview. You don't accidentally put in a name and you can't put it down to mistranslation, can you? It does feel like a stunt to sell books, which I understand. I wish it was you know, the case. But, okay, how did that happen? Um, you know, it's still being investigated right now. I had never submitted a book that had their names in it, so I can only talk about my version. Yeah. I'm obviously frustrated. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm upset about yeah. it because, to be honest, I've been operating in a bubble of no emotion for the last 10 days. Now, the royal family have been continuing on with their official duties. There's been no statement that's been put out um, about this. Uh, King Charles today met with the Nigerian president during a 48-hour trip to Dubai. And William and Kate, they have been welcoming the future king and queen of Sweden to Windsor Castle. Sarah? Thank you, Carrie Ann. I do wonder how good this is. Yes, we do, don't we? <laughs> Perplexing. Yeah. yeah, it's a bombshell, all right. Overnight, the author Omid Scobie has broken his silence. You don't accidentally put in a name, and you can't put it down to mistranslation, can you? It does feel like a stunt to sell books, which I understand. I wish it was you know, the case. But, okay, how did that happen? Um, you know, but... It's still being investigated right now. I had never submitted a book that had their names in it, so... I can only talk about my version. Yeah. I'm obviously frustrated. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm upset about yeah. it because, to be honest, I've been operating in a bubble of no emotion for the last 10 days. A bubble of no emotion. All right, let's bring in royal commentator now, Victoria Arbiter from Melbourne. Victoria, good morning to you. What is your take on Scobie's comments there? Good morning to both of you. Well, before we get into the nitty gritty of that, I do have to say it is a very difficult topic to discuss mm. simply because there's not a shred of evidence to support the claims that are made in this book. I do think it's interesting that Omid Scobie has been quick to distance himself and deny any responsibility for the names being in the book. Uh, there have been accusations that it was the translator's fault. There have been accusations that it was the publisher's fault. But this is why it's going to be so important to conduct an internal inquiry because someone is at fault here. Who it is remains to be seen. Well, Omid has now denied any responsibility for the mistake, saying he knew the names but never wrote them into any drafts. So, I mean, it just begs the question, doesn't it, Victoria? How did this all come out? Yes, well, that is the million-dollar question this morning. Overnight, the Dutch translator was approached by reporters. She appeared to be very distressed to be involved in any of this, and she said that she's been a translator for over 20 years. She was simply doing the job she was paid for. She said she was given the English text. She translated it into Dutch. So, yes, it all sounds very nefarious, doesn't it? Because this book has been translated into many different mm. languages. Dutch, German, French, uh, Spanish. Spanish, and yet it's only the Dutch edition in which these names appeared. Now, it certainly wouldn't be on the translator to pull those names out of the sky. So, again, it falls to an inquiry to investigate exactly what happened and how this got past the publishers and the printing press and made it onto the bookshelves in the Netherlands. Uh, it just... It doesn't make sense. It's the most contentious paragraph in the most talked about book in the world right now. How is it possible that no one checked that before it went to print? And meantime, what should Harry and Meghan be doing about this? You know, is silence an option for them? Should they be coming out and denouncing what's been aired in this book? What do you think about that, Victoria? 
Well, people are certainly calling on them to denounce the book because these types of claims are incredibly damaging. So far, I think most people, certainly in the UK, are saying that they don't believe that the King or the, the Princess of Wales have uh, done anything that could be perceived as racism. At the same time, I would never presume to tell a person of colour what would be racism in their world. Having said that, I do think that Harry and Meghan will have to address this at some point. They're in a very tight spot because historically they've proven to be quite litigious. They have pushed back immediately when stories have appeared that they say are not accurate. Their lawyers have been quick to send letters to various newspapers. Now they suddenly seem to be employing the royal family's well-worn mantra, which is never complain, never explain. But given how damaging these claims are, it's entirely possible that they're seeking guidance in terms of how best to proceed because they have had a history before of, of having a, a relationship with Omid Scobie. I don't believe they're pals for one second. He has been very clear that they are not pals. But you may remember with Finding Freedom, all the parties denied working together on that book. And it's true that Harry and Meghan were not interviewed for that book, but Meghan did have to admit in court that she had briefed one of her aides to mm. give information to the lawyers. So I think Harry and Meghan will have to say something at some point, but how they respond is going to be a very delicate balance. This is just a minefield now, isn't it? So what about Buckingham Palace, Victoria? In your history of knowledge of them, do you think they will respond to this? I think if we look back at precedent, it's very unlikely that they mm. will respond. That The take is always that they don't want to further fan the flames. They don't want to give any publicity to the authors in question. I certainly think they're going to be hoping that this story dies down. It's business as usual for mm. them. Having said that, overnight it did come to light as well that royal aides are looking at all options available to them. But I think it's very unlikely that there will be any kind of comment beyond recollections may vary, which, of course, the Queen famously <sighs> said in 20. Old Christmas in Sandringham this year, isn't, isn't it? it? Yes. Icy. I so see. icy. Victoria, always great to have your insights. Thanks so much for joining us. Author of Bombshell Royal Book Endgame has this morning defended his work on British TV. Nine Europe correspondent Carrie Owen Greenbank is following this story. Carrie, Omid Scobie has denied naming the alleged royal racists. Morning, Brooke. Well, Omid Scobie has been repeatedly denying that he named these so-called royal racists in his book Endgame. And again this morning, he came out on morning television saying the same thing. So the big question now is who put those names in the Dutch version of his book Endgame, which has since been removed from the shelves. Uh, it will be re-sent out tomorrow. Some are saying it's all a bit of a stunt to sell books. Piers Morgan has gone ahead and announced the names of these so-called alleged royal racists on his Talk TV program. But Omid Scobie has been adamant from the start he was not going to name them due to legal reasons. After Prince Harry and Meghan when they were speaking with Oprah Winfrey back in 2021, claimed that a member of the royal family questioned uh, what the skin colour would be of their then unborn child. Uh, here is Omid Scobie now. You don't accidentally put in a name, and you can't put it down to mistranslation, can you? It does feel like a stunt to sell books, which I understand. I wish it was you know, the case. Okay, how did that happen? Um, you know, it's still being investigated right now. I had never submitted a book that had their names in it, so... I can only talk about my version. Yeah. I'm obviously frustrated. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm upset about yeah. it because, to be honest, I've been operating in a bubble of no emotion for the last 10 days. There are questions around whether Buckingham Palace will be responding to this and if so, how. For now, at least, the royals are continuing on with their official duties. King Charles meeting the Nigerian president today during a 48-hour trip to Dubai. And William and Kate have been welcoming the future king and queen of Sweden to Windsor Castle. Brooke? All right. Thanks for the update, Harry. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?